Check it out here, folks. We have the Xsense carbon monoxide detector and the first alert carbon monoxide alarms from Amazon.com. I purchased them just the other day, straight out of the pack. I'm gonna be comparing them to various forensics detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. Folks, here we are. We've got our 500 parts per million carbon monoxide source, and we're gonna pop it through into this chamber. There's a little hole here on the side that I've drilled and we're gonna be exposing these guys to carbon monoxide. Let me get the lid, put the lid on, so make sure we have a real enclosure. Let's do that right there, folks. Okay, again, we have the Xsense, we have the first alert. It's powered by 110 volts, folks, and we've got the forensics detectors, low-level carbon monoxide detector, okay? We're gonna give this a squirt. It's high carbon monoxide, guys. That's all we need, just one or two seconds squirt, 500 parts per million, and we're gonna see the levels when they start to register. The forensics detectors starts registering above 10 parts per million. The first alert, as you can see, is fairly blank. Let's see if we could zoom in on that since we've exposed them. Okay, and the Xsense we see reading zero. So there is a digital screen on the Xsense, digital screen on forensics, there you go straight away bank guys you can see it's already registered and the other two have not first alert still sleeping and so too is accents okay so keep your eyes on it folks keep your eyes on it and as time goes on we're gonna see the CO concentration increase with time folks and again although it's not alarming it's showing you that there's a low level of carbon monoxide and this is a enough it's enough to let somebody know to take some action because as time is going on, we are breathing more and more and research has shown low levels of carbon monoxide exposure is not good, folks. The scientists know and the more research that comes out, the more we see that uh, low level of exposure to carbon monoxide actually is not good for the elderly, for the young. And actually for the average person, it's just it's, it's just not good. It's a toxin. But I'll let you read more about that physiological evidence from academic research. And please do your due diligence, folks, so you could educate yourself on the effects of low-level carbon monoxide. Now, typically speaking, 26 ppm, this should be alarming in 60 seconds because we've exceeded the 25 ppm level. So the forensics detector... Uh, detector should be triggering after 60 seconds the timer goes on and it's gonna alarm us in a few seconds I am sure again still zero here and still zero or blank screen bang there you go folks that's a low-level alarm from the forensics detectors detector see detector X sense actually is starting to register bang there it goes it's registering 30 so that must be its minimum uh, anything above 30 it starts registering and displaying you see that folks I'll just zoom in on that we see 30 there folks this 30 it did register but it's not alarming actually I read the manual X sense alarms um, at 30 parts per million but I think we have to wait something like 60 minutes let me check the manual for you. Yes, actually, I'm just reading the Xsense manual here, folks. 30 ppm over 120 minutes. So we have to wait two hours for the Xsense to start alarming. The first alert, let me just turn that off, folks. Let me hush that guy. Okay, the first alert complies with UL2034. And what that means is that these guys register an alarm. 70 parts per million between 60 and 240 minutes, folks. So you have to wait quite a few hours to get an alarm if you're about 70 parts per million. It's quite ugly, folks. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep exposing it to carbon monoxide and see how far we get until these guys start alarming. Um, let's do that right now. As you can see, I'm letting the high concentration of gas get into my chain. And please, if you do this anywhere in a lab at home, make sure you have negative ventilation. We are in a well-ventilated area and air is flowing out of this room. So it's not a hazard. Carbon monoxide is not accumulating in the room. I have CO detectors all around me. So I'm doing this experiment very safely. Now here we go, bang, 46, 39, 93 folks, 46, 40, 113. Now you could see that 
let me zoom in let me zoom in so you could see what's going on okay we're starting to register on all three it's a little um it's a little hard to see because of the um, opacity of the plastic cover here but we have 40 here we have 81 here 168 on the forensics detectors folks here we go 159 40 178 okay now don't forget i did hush i did silence the forensics detectors alarm folks okay the point here is i want to see when these guys start alarming i'm very curious if they do alarm so i'm going to pause this and we'll come back and see how far it goes okay okay folks we're at 203 202 192 actually they're in this fairly same ballpark we did see out the forensics climb to that level faster um but nevertheless it could have just been the non-homogeneous swirling of the carbon monoxide in the chamber but with that said 202 202 208 you're at a high level of concentration still no alarms from the top two um ul2034 protocol the xsense has its own protocol it's they've they've done something a little bit different the forensic detectors alarming 60 seconds over 30 parts per million even when you silence it at a certain period it starts alarming again okay folks um and that's basically it let me give it another pause i'll give it another 30 seconds we'll come back all right folks it's been um in total at least several minutes now still no alarm from the top two the levels actually are in fair agreement, are actually in fair agreement, so I would say they are quite well um, agreeing with each other, which is a good thing, but the main thing is we need to be alarmed, we could be sleeping and breathing in several hundred or a couple of a hundred parts per million of carbon monoxide, and that, of course, will not make us feel good at all, folks. Well, that's it, folks, we could be here all day doing different tests and things like that, but you get the gist, you get... The understanding of the difference between a regular carbon monoxide detector and a low level fast carbon monoxide detector folks that's the main takeaway here you still need these ul2034 it's in many counties and cities and states it's law you must have it folks but we encourage customers to be a little bit more proactive get something that will alarm you much earlier to take proactive action folks be well be safe and have a great day